It's a God who does his miracles and wrote his miracles by finger. Now, we saw him writing on the ground. And why he did that was because a woman was accused of committing adultery and they brought the woman in front of Jesus. The man who committed that atrocity with her was not there. We live in a dispensation where people do what we call selective accusation and selective judgment. When they make mistake, they cover it. When their passive enemy make mistake, they amplify it. And we have so many Pharisees and Sadducees in the body of Christ. They choose who to accuse, who to amplify is our mistake, and they choose what to cover. When God told me, the reason why I have hid you so that nobody takes glory is because I want to use you as an apostle with a lion heart to audaciously speak to the heels of the system. And I've also allowed your life to have a question mark so that you don't take pride when I begin to use you. I also want you to also know you are a mortal man being made perfect by me. I understand my cause and why God raised me up. When somebody to, um, asked me, say, the way you are wired, I don't understand. I said, my wired, the way I am wired, I'm wired like this to fit my purpose. And I don't pretend about what my wired, the way God wired me. I'm an Akiti man. And they know us for stubbornness. We are fearless. We say things the way it is. And to couple it up, I came from the barrack. And I'm a raw barrack boy. I spent most of my life in the barrack. And when I mean barrack boy, I mean real barrack boy. Not queer queer barrack boy. Not officer barrack, officer children. Mm -mm. All the ranks. You need to understand. And so I understand my wire. You don't come to this church and be like a chicken. Mm -mm. The enemy is too small. We don't entertain enemy here. What happened last week? You have put it aside. We have moved on. We are too big for small, small people to play Lido with us. We are pursuing the pursuer. Are you hearing me? Come on, shut fire! I was told a story about a madman in Joss chasing people away. I met with a man of God who on suit, an evangelist. When the evangelist was chasing people, they were no, nowhere to escape. They were just in the middle of a, a war here, war here. You either run or I run. So the man of God pulled his shoe, removed his tie, carried the suit, hang, do boom, boom. The madman, hey, like a rago. You know when this, um, <laughs> when the madman, yeah, makata, yakata, he pursued the man of God. The man, the madman, come back. When madness jam madness. If you think you are mad, that's why God made us mad for Jesus. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you. So these guys came to look for Jesus' trouble. And Jesus wrote on the ground. 
Someone say the finger of God. Say the finger. Say the finger. The finger of God writing on the ground. Anytime God stretch forth his finger to write, judgment is on ground. Ah. <laughs> somebody is free and somebody is judged. I don't like the way they are shouting that amen. <laughs> this finger of God writing on the ground is to defend you and to judge your enemies. Ah, I thought you are, you are shouting that one well. That finger is writing now. Writing now. Let Reuben live and not die. Let Joshua live and not die. I will take him from strength to strength and from glory to glory. The finger is writing. He suffer no man to do them wrong. He reproved king, yea, for their sake. Ah, ah, he frustrated the counsel and the devices of the crafty. And he prevented them from carrying out their enterprise. Ah, the finger of God is writing, yea, I shall deliver you from six trouble. And it is writing on the ground, saying, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. The finger of God is writing. I'm not hearing you well. Say it well. Say it again. Say it again. Uh, I thought you were shouting that one. Say the finger of God. Writing. Writing. Those who are your enemies are about to run now. Oh, may I thought if you are shouting it, you are already feeling there. They are running away. They are running away. The louder the amen, you are taking judgment over them. You are ruling and you are in charge. The louder the amen, somebody is receiving freedom. On Wednesday, I showed you something here about the watchmen. The Bible comes. And the background of this story is that it was by the decree of the watchmen. Look at what you and decree what you want to see in the life of your enemies. We are watchmen. Hear what the Bible says. It says, let his heart be changed from a man's heart. And let the beast's heart be given unto him. And let seven times pass over him. That seven times means seven years. Verse 15. As 18, I mean 17, 17, 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers. <laughs> and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most I rule it in the kingdom of men and give it, it to whomsoever he will. And he set it up it the beast of the best of men. So he said, this decree whereby the watchmen. And who are the watchmen? Men like Daniel. <laughs> there was an agreement with the host of heaven. So Nebuchadnezzar did not just enter the bush and be, become an animal for seven good years. No. It was by the decree. This led to the extinction and the total collapse of Nebuchadnezzar and his reign. Then, in Daniel chapter 5, verse 5, follow me. I want you to pray. Verse 5. Daniel 5. Blow it. In the same hour came it forth the finger of a man's hand and it wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. <laughs> the hand that wrote was the hand of a man. <laughs> Listen to me. Look at it. Blow it again. Blow it again. He said, in the same hour for, <laughs> came for the fingers of a man's hand. What? The fingers. No judgment is executed until a man's hand is involved. Not just finger. Fingers. 
it is when the fingers of a man is involved that the finger of God comes up to endorse it is when the fingers of a man is involved that the finger of God comes up to endorse the fingers of a man and put, put it again put it please follow me I want you to know why you don't close your mouth when it is time to make judgmental prayer and in the same hour came for the fingers of a man's hand and it rolled over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall uh, of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand of the hand of of the hand that wrote <laughs> today your hands will be stretched <laughs> and your enemies will see the part of God's judgment through your hands. Ah, you are not hearing me. You will decree here, it will land in your village. Ah, you will decree here, the head of the witches will see. Their eyes will blind. Their legs will paralyze. Ah, oh, if you are shouting that amen, then I know you are not among them. Ah, they will see, they will see, they will see what you do. Please, I don't want any movement and no children should be allowed out. I prophesy the hands of God will stretch forth and I declare that power of God will stretch forth and paralyze the hands of the wicked. The hands of God. The hands of So God does not do anything until the hands of a man is involved. Sit down. Put the next verse. Put the next verse. Verse 6. Follow me. I want to read a long one. Maybe to 31. I will just interpret. Please blow it. Please. Verse 6 of Daniel chapter 5. Verse 6. Verse 6, Daniel chapter 5, verse 6. Please help me at the table, please. Somebody shout fire. Then they blow it, please. Blow it. The king's countenance was changed and his thought troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smooth one against another <laughs> because the king saw the finger of god through the hand of a man his joint there was a dislocation after today your enemies will have dislocations in their physical body in their plot there shall be commotion the louder the amen the quicker a miracle Shout that amen like thunder. Sit down. Please blow it. Just blow it for me. Verse 7, isn't it? Verse 7. Somebody shout fire. <laughs> Their joint will scatter. Get my image and blow it and after bring that back. Their joint will scatter. The louder the amen. And he said, he said there, he said, and the king cried out aloud. To bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, whosoever shall read this writing, show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and he shall be third ruler in the kingdom. Ha. The, the king now start opening up and say, look, 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 hear me. When God begins to do something in your life, even soothsayer, astrologers, ordinary men will not be able to read the finger of God. If they can read what God is doing in your life, then it is not the finger of God. But what is the secret of this power? What is the secret of the audacity? How? How? How did he got the money? How? 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 how, how? Did she got mad? How did she get married? How how managed? How managed? I don't understand. Who helped him? How managed? How did he cross this place? How managed? What brought the breakthrough? That is when 
they begin to look for people to interpret what they see in your life what they don't understand they criticize what they understand they destroy but hear me when they begin to ask questions about your life where did he come from how managed who helped him who is behind him who is that and that what is the source of his power then that is the finger of god because god will do something he will make the wisest of the wisest to be foolish the soothsayer will not be able to prophesy the astrologers will fail in their permutation the star guessers will be blind to guess your star the wisest of the pharisee will be confused the interpreters of the law will be bind with the law the greatest preachers and the teachers of our time will not be able to understand and explain the hand of god upon your life why people cannot understand prophet tb joshua the hand of god upon that man's life is not a hand that ordinary men can interpret you can't interpret it how how you can't that's why they give him all manner of name so many preachers in the body of christ who you think they have the power of god they are local and um, they are they are they are not they are, they are just lecturers lecturers Deep color to deep. Sit down. If you criticize the man that he arranged miracle, look at it. The guy was put in a coffee and the power of God was moving. That's why the man of God is dead. That's where you know that after he's dead, the oil was moving in the congregation. People were healed. People were vomiting blood. Can I talk to the Pharisee and the Sadducee in the body of Christ who are just talkers with that power? Every man of God with that power power is a comedian in succession can i preach here can i preach here Sit down. if you criticize him that he was using something when he was alive now his body was carried people were vomiting blood power of god you are alive nobody is falling down under your ministration you are a dead man of god you are a dead man of god Ichabod has taken place jealous christians who call themselves ministers of the gospel i mean vampires in suit and tie Ah, can I preach here? <laughs> can I preach here? The king called the soothsayers, the astrologers, come and interpret to me. This is what happened to we prophet who carry power of God. They are trying to interpret us, and the people trying to judge us are astrologers, soothsayers, comedians in suit, vampires in the name of holiness. I mean, confused Christian having the form of godliness, denying the power, empty pulpit without fire. The fire on the altar have died, the career of the fire have died, their bones are dry. They are in the valley full of dry blood scattered about. Can I preach here? Say they lay hand and demon speak. Is there is the demon your elder brother? Why are you angry that a man cast that demon? How do I know you are genuine? When the hand of God is upon your life, people will not be able to interpret you. And when they don't understand you, they will call you names. 
when they don't understand you they will call you names you are not our god you did not die on the cross for us you did not shed your blood for us you are not the owner of this work god is the owner of this work he's the one that we judge the work the last time i checked you are not jesus you are not holy spirit you are not god the father if you have nothing to say shut up and keep quiet am i helping you am i helping you oh am i helping you someone shot fire Three things I learned about Prophet T.B. Joshua or Sino Prophet T.B. Joshua's death. That those who hate you in your lifetime will not change their mind after you have gone. They will continue to hate you. So don't live your life to please them. And don't bribe them. And don't give a damn about them. They are not your existence. Enjoy your life and go to heaven. And when they get to heaven, you will meet them while you say bye-bye to them in hellfire. Number two, lesson I learned about his death. Those that love you will stand for you in your death, before your death, after your death, and after everything. And those that are with you are more than the smallest generation of minute army of the ants fighting you. Don't give a damn about the minority fighting you because if God be for you, nobody can be against you. Number three, your legacy, what you do in your lifetime, will speak for you after your death. Continue to do good. Let them interpret what they want to interpret. People have eye, they have conscience, and they can see. Prophet, why are you talking? I'm a prophet. This is my lineage. And I'm not ashamed. Are you hearing me? Come on, shut fire. Come on, shut fire. Shut fire. Shut fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Somebody told me, if you talk, you are going to inherit Prophet T.B. Joshua's enemy. I said, I've already inherited it before him. I've already inherited it. In his lifetime, I've been talking. They've been fighting me, so you don't need. Don't even tell me. I've already inherited it. I know them. No matter what you do, they can't accept you. This is one of the things I tell younger generation. You can't bribe those people who have built courtism around ministry. They have turned it to court. They have made their clique to look like heaven. Your clique is not heaven. Put the next scripture. Me? You see this me? My name is Joshua Ginla. They call me Ororo Master. Till the day I will leave this at this mouth, we never fear any human being except God. Except God. Are you not hearing my voice? Do I look like a chicken? I, do I look like a chicken? I am small for the big wahala. If you don't talk, you will die. If you talk, you will die. So why not talk the talk and go to heaven? Hey! Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Victory! 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 Victory!
victory, 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 victory. Noise. That's too small. Make another one. Put the next verse. Verse what? Huh? Let's rush it. Then came in all the king wise men. But they could not read the writing. Knock me not to the king. The interpretation thereof. <laughs> they could not read. <laughs> he will make the wise men foolish when they are reading your life. <laughs> he frustrates the handwriting of the crafty. Whatever he, he, he wrote over your life, they are trying to interpret. They use their dictionary, lexicon, encyclopedia, everything. They cannot even interpret. They can't understand. They say, what is the meaning of Ororo? They don't understand. They say, why is he always using his left arm? They can't understand. Magamanuko Yagada. They say, why is he shouting fire? They don't understand. They say the way he's walking on the hot, I look like a madman. They don't understand. The injection, what I call it, is plenty. Those who, go, those who went to the depot, they will tell you the kind of injection. When you pin your head on ground, on gravel, and put your hand at the back, when you rise up, your civilian mentality will turn upside down. When you see people, you see them like two. That's why when soldiers slap you, you know, say somebody slap you. You might go, no. You go, yeah, twice. Then you hear, yeah. it's coming again. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Nobody go tell you, go need that. Say, oh, God, oh, my, my father, my grandfather. <laughs> Sit down, please. <laughs> Put the next verse. They will not understand you. Even the wisest of the wisest. They will be scattered for life. Then the king Bish, Shaza greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were as cornered. The king and the queen of the witchcrafts and all their leaders, they will be troubled after today. They are demons and they are agents. That will be what he said. If for God don't get trouble, we too we are in troubles. Who the next verse? Let's rush this thing. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and the lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not their thoughts be troubled thee. Nor let their countenance be changed. Verse 11. Now, queen, now, now the queen of the king, now they talk now. <laughs> He said, he said, and uh, he's, he's a man in the kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods, uh, you know, he cannot even tell what which god, so he said holy gods. In, and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of a god, was found in him. Whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I saw thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Do you know what? He, when, he, when he interpreted the dream of the father of this king, the father made Daniel the master of the king, of the astrologer, the soothsayer, everything. The queen said, your father, when he was alive, there was one man that have the spirit of the gods, which is the spirit of God, because that means the queen 
is going behind to consult Daniel. Even when the husband believes in so many of these gods. So she knows this guy carries. That's one of the things most people are angry. Say, they will criticize us, but their leaders are coming to us. And they, they don't know why. You can't deceive people forever. Go on. Put the next verse. Blow it. For in as much as the excellent spirit and the knowledge of understanding, interpretation of dreams and showing heads of hard sentences and dissolving doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar, now let Daniel be called and and he will show interpretation. Look at how they describe him. An excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding interpretation of dreams showing, showing of hard sentences. The guy can break down the most complicated language. No matter how you speak your English language, the guy will break it down. Spiritual linguistic. Put it. Put the next verse. Let's go. Then Daniel brought before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Are thou Daniel, which art the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, the fighter, brought out of Jerry? Go on. And, and, and go. Go to the next verse 14. And I even heard of thee that the spirit of God is in thee, and the light and understanding and excellence of wisdom is found in thee. Go on. Verse 15. Verse 15. And now the wise men and the astrologers have been brought in before me, there, and they should read this writing, make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of things. Now, let me tell you the rest story because of time. Now, Daniel started and started breaking down how God used him during the days of his father. Daniel was talking to him, said, look, you, you're a small boy. Let me tell you how, how this thing started from your father. This is how the Lord God Almighty did this, that and that, that and that, that and that. Who made this handwriting to come? The watchers. So it means that Daniel was the one who commanded. He wrote something in his bedroom. And the hand of God took it and write on the wall through the candle. And the guy was sitting. The decree of the watchers. So Daniel knows. And talking to the king, he, he knew exactly what was there. And what was the handwriting? Mene, mene, fekel. <laughs> and so Daniel said, uh, 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 what is about to happen today? Mene, mene. He said, today, 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 thy kingdom shall be taken away from thee. <laughs> fekel. He said, thou be way on a weight and you are found what wanting. Meaning that God is judging you. When you read 30 and 31, as soon as Daniel interpret and finish the interpretation, the king installed Daniel to be in charge of a position and that night the king was killed. God didn't say because Daniel interpreted it that the word will not come. When it is written, it cannot be changed. Get a piece of paper. Take it. Get a piece of paper and a biro. You are going to make three judgments on your enemies. Then you will get another piece of paper. You will write three things that you want God to do. <laughs> are you following me? Is it too fast? Are you about to write it? Because God said to me, as you write them down, <laughs> I'm writing it on your enemy. As you write them about you, I'm writing it about you. Please don't write judgment for yourself. <laughs> Let me explain again for proper understanding. Take the first paper, write it on your enemies. Then the second one, put your name. On that first paper, don't put any enemy. Just put to whosoever he be. Write Galatians 5.10. Whosoever he be. Some of you might be suspecting somebody. Please don't put the person name. Because you don't know who is your true enemy. Just write whosoever he be. To whom it may consign. Then on the one that you are writing for yourself. For those of you watching us. Watching us via live TV. Get two paper plain. And write one. Put your name. Three things you want God to do. The other one, write 
to whom it may consign and put the three prayer points that you want God to do to deal with you. Please do these things. I will run. All on me, I will run me. I will run. All on me, I will run me. The big God. I will run. All on me, I will run me. I will run. All on me, I will run me. Anything for me, that will run for me. Devil, I will run me. I will run, all on me, I will run me, oh, me, 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 God. I will run me, oh, I will run, all on me, I will run me, oh, I will run me, just I will run, all on me, I will run me, oh, and me too, and me too, for me, that's all I will run me. I will run, all on me, I will run me, oh, me, 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 Champions TV Plus. You're going to write on a piece of paper three things you want God to do on your enemies. Judgmental fire. You put the Galatians chapter 5 verse 10 and you can write to whom it may consign. I'm not asking you to spell out names of people. Just allow the Holy Ghost to do the judgment. Then on the other paper, you're going to write your full name. And then you write three things you want God to do. When God is executing judgment, he's writing something new. It's by the decree of the watchers. And now, just in case you write your prayer points on what you want God to do. After I finish, we'll wave the first prayer point of judgment when it's time. 
then remember me, then the last one will be the ones you want God to do for you. Then you will open your Bible, you put it in Psalm 83, inside your Bible, and close it. Not now, after I've finished. And you will leave it there for seven days. Not the judgment prayer, the one you want God to do something for you. And when you get back home today, you are going to read Psalm 83. Is that okay? And then you put the things you want God to do inside and lock it. And just leave it for seven days. Is that okay? Leviticus chapter 16. Let me show you something. And this is the last thing I'm going to show you. And we're going to pray like never before. My God. Leviticus chapter 16 verse 21. Are we there? The church is too cool for my likeness. Can you make some crazy noise for Jesus? Now, follow me with this very scripture. Very important. I can preach for two hours on this, but I'm going to shorten it and give you just a few things I want you to see. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the life goats. Good. And confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgression in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Let's read it again. I want to hear you read it, please. Please drop your prayer request now. Follow this now. Very important. Please, I don't want you to miss this. Let's read it together. And Aaron. Please, those of you on, on Champions TV, please make sure you help our viewers. And Aaron shall lay. Eh? Eh? And Aaron shall do what? Is both hands. Please help those in Champions TV. I don't want them to miss this. And Aaron shall lay his both hands. And what? Upon the head of the life goat. Confess over him. All the iniquities of what? All the iniquities of the children of Israel and their transgression in all their sins. Aaron. Please, what do you use for an animal? Is it him or it? Eh? You use it. So now this, no, but I love King James. He said, Aaron shall lay both of his hands upon him. We know he's referring to a goat. But King James say is him. Him. I'm talking about the finger of God. I want to show you what is happening to some of you who don't know. They have laid hands on you. Now watch this. Please. Who committed sin? Please, who committed sin? Who committed sin? Children of Israel. Please answer me. Who committed sin? The children of Israel. Who is carrying the sin of the children of Israel? The God. So, in other words, other translation will say curse. Other translation will say affliction. Other translation will say transgression, iniquity, and the rest. So, the curse that is upon the children of of Israel was placed on an innocent goat. And the high priest, I'm talking to, I want you to see how some of you are carrying curse. You are an innocent man, but you have become a scapegoat. You are an innocent woman, but you have become a scapegoat. They have placed their both hands on your head. Now watch this. They will now carry the goat after they have released all the seed 
on the goat. They will now lead the goat by a man to the wilderness. Then the goat will begin to wonder as if he is free or it is free. And then the curse of a whole nation will be on one goat. Some of you, your problem is not what you did. It's what they did and they put your name there. Some of you, it is not because you are evil, but they have laid all the accusation on your head. They have now led you into the wilderness to wander. They committed the sin, but they make you the scapegoat. Some politicians will steal money and they will put it in the head of the palm sec director. When it is time, he said, we know nothing about it. Who signed? Not the politician. Who signed? The director. By law, the law doesn't know them say it is the facts before the judge that the judge is going to use. Who manipulated you? He's behind the scene. Who is using you as a scapegoat? He's even talking, let's deal with corruption in this country. But he is the one that led you to the corruption. There are some of you sons under a father. Some other sons will lead you to rebel against your father. And hear what they will say. They will say they have truth, evidence, facts. And they will begin.